Hey, it's Terry, your favorite no bullshit artist and business coach. And you're listening to Terry Talks, where we discuss all things taboo, uncovering art industry nonsense, grounding you in confidence and leadership to run an arts business with unwavering power and grit. Hello, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. To make sure to subscribe below, share, share, like, comment. Um, I will definitely. You all actually uh, also head to the links for more resources and ways to work with me. Um, See you on the gram. And it's a it's a juicy one. So obviously, you are here for the unfiltered version, the no bullshit version of any topic that I'm discussing here. Um, You voted on what's next. The big question of how to decide or how to know or how to identify what the next step is as an artist. Now, there are three categories that I've broken down every artist that I've ever worked with. The first one is the emerging artist stage kind of one developmental stage um, uh, ideation philosophy, mission, client, um, you know, avatar, all of those kind of first initial uh, thought process. The second stage would be the practicing artist, the one who's gaining momentum, the one who feels like they can step into the CEO version of themselves. And the professional artist has acquired the skill sets to run a business, wear all of the hats um, if they need to, has really settled into what the business model looks like, maybe has gained somewhat of a network and knows their shit to some extent. What I do want to say is no matter how many years you have been in business, you are not exempt from learning new skill sets. Shit gets boring real fast. There are times in the freelancer lifestyle where things flatline and you need to reach out to a broader audience. You need to transition on a, uh, onto a different platform. It's similar to what, to the choice that I made to start a YouTube podcast. Um, I realized that the way that I was expressing myself on Instagram was different from um, maybe the way that I wanted to express myself, maybe the way that I was formerly expressing myself on my live um on my Instagram lives. And I wanted to return back to that type of creativity. So, you know, no matter if I've been doing this seven years, 20 years, I knew that there had to be a shift. So as always, I've got some notes here because I want to keep this discussion um, and this topic really aligned. And I want to just like cut to the chase with you all. So the first thing I think uh, in thinking about where you fit into those three stages is really important in just like self-acknowledgement and understanding and identifying where you are today. That literally to me is the first step. What have you been working on? What have you accomplished thus far? Because it's very rare that we get a chance to sit and think about the things we've accomplished within either a two month mark a six month mark, a one year mark. And I like to keep, you know, um, things really close to me, like time very close to me, right? Of course, I can probably think five years out, but in the freelance world, it is really hard to know where the economy is going to be. It's really hard to know um, what the art buying sort of energy and vibe is going to look like, right? During the pandemic, art, um, Art sales were, you know, going through the roof and things are a little bit more quiet now. And so, you know, things are going to fluctuate, but it's really important for you to identify where you are in the industry and, um, you know, knowing thyself first. And, And that kind of might be a hard truth for some people, because if you haven't really been doing shit and you've just been creating for years, um, you need to kind of go back and own that you haven't actually been growing a business, okay? An artist is not an artist in business. And you are someone who has to like, who has to come to a realization whether you have a business or you are just in the studio making art. And it is a 
an intense, passionate hobby of yours. And both are fine, but you, you have to first like understand, like, have you stepped into that space? The second thing is like, what is your comfort level as a business owner? If you have to, at the beginning of things, you're emerging or you're practicing, uh, or you're even a professional artist, have you tapped into, um, different areas where you could potentially be making more sales? Have you tapped into how you appear and present yourself and show up on social media in 2023? Have you, um, you know, uh, stepped into the negotiator uh, persona, right? When uh, you're working with a gallery and they want you to sign a contract that's exclusive and you sign it and then you're kind of like fucked, right? Because you can't show that work anywhere else or you can't, you know, move your collection for another six six months to a year, right? So all of these, this sort of mentality, this CEO mentality has to be fully in line in order for you to to essentially run a business like anyone else. Um, so your comfort level in wearing those hats is really important to knowing what the next step is. And these are all things to identifying where you are and what those next steps could be based on reflecting on where you are. The last thing is reflecting on progress. Areas where, you know, uh, areas of strength, and areas of weakness and areas of improvement and areas where you are still stuck um, sort of on this like hamster wheel areas that are working and areas that you need to throw in the trash and move on from. Um, there have been times where I've had to revamp the same thing over and over again because it wasn't in line with what I had envisioned for myself and for my clients. Um, a program that didn't quite um, launch the way I wanted to, and really having the strength to be real with myself. And that's what it comes down to, because I, I, you know, observe lots of artists in more of the starving artist mindset still today, who will, you know, to some extent cry wolf, or they will, you know, shoot themselves in the foot on an opportunity that they just chose to let go by. And that self-awareness is a very important quality in running a business and being a good leader, especially if you don't have a team to give you that feedback consistently, right? It's uh, emotional intelligence and knowing um, how you react to things. If you know that something is out of your comfort zone and that is the next step, to think about that in pieces and really kind of dissect why it's uncomfortable and figuring out how to get to that place. Um, so that's sort of like the overarching, um, I guess, process to knowing what the next step is. And you may have been doing this for 20 years, but something still not flowing, something still not coming to you with ease. Maybe financial, financially things are not consistent enough. Um, or you haven't kept up with the times of being on social media or using um the the like the interweb as a way to you know broaden your reach. Um, so hopefully that all makes sense because I've gone through this many times. I've had to make a lot of shifts. I am in a really, really serious state of transition in my personal and professional life. And all I do is self-reflect. All I do is think about what are the things that bring me joy. And yeah, that's, that's something that I can think about today. I haven't visited this question in so long because I have been just like running my business with my head cut off, right? I have been like in hustle mode probably for the last year, which is very disappointing for me um, because I'm not about the hustle culture in any capacity. I'm about the passion culture. I'm about the um, go get this shit done culture. Um, I don't let opportunities go by. I never let an application um, stunt my growth, uh, because that one hour that I spent on an application could be a lifetime of, you know, of bliss, um, of opportunity of leveling up. 
of having me just live a, a life that I've been dreaming of. Um, because I also don't dream as much anymore. I like getting it done and having it not be an option. It's a non-negotiable in the life that I've chosen. So these dreams are, are a reality, uh, for me in any, in all capacities. Um, so really thinking about rewinding your resume and looking at what you're presenting today and updating that, you know, and, and having that be ready for any and all opportunities that are crossing your path. That is a next step. If you are an emerging artist and you're just starting to build the foundation of your business, right? Every section is important. And it can be really overwhelming at first. Um, a client that I'm working with is on the emerging artist side. And she is so excited about all of the new things that she can create uh, as, as a business owner. She's like, wow, I get to decide how to package my artwork. I get to decide how that looks. I get to decide what my client journey is and how I could best put my, like put my best foot forward. I get to decide how I want it to look. Do I want to put a sticker on front? Do I want to create a logo? Like people forget sometimes it's like, you have to rewind. You have to remind yourself what, how exciting it can be to be, to live this life and to really create the brand and the business and just the the artist that you want to exude, that you want to represent, you are representing yourself. Like it, it, like I'm not talking about galleries. I'm not talking about external support. I'm talking about you as a human being and stepping into your 2.0 self. That's where the next step is, right? How can I challenge what's currently been happening to me? What's currently uh, been growing inside of me? Um, because being in the studio is is only one part of the whole vision. Um, you can create with ease. You have no fucking problem like being in the studio, indulging and buying new materials and, you know, not having to really like it's a it's second nature to you. But growing your your business ethics is an area that may be very challenging and intimidating to some but can be super fascinating. And that's something that I, I help to support my clients and I bring out of my clients. It's like, yo, this shit is fun as fuck. Let me help you realize how fun this shit is. Um, so, you know, it, at any stage where you are, it's about identifying and about looking backwards, planning things always with the end in mind. So what that could look like, and I, I just want to make sure that I'm looking at my notes actually, because, um, you know, sometimes you got to do that. And I have some really important things that I wrote down when I wasn't thinking, um, when I was kind of like brainstorming this topic that you all wanted me to talk about. So working with the end in mind, always, this depends on what the goal was or currently is. Now I do this thing with my clients. They get a big document that's a spreadsheet that has tabs for every single aspect of their business. And they can customize it as much as they want. I only use this. It's called the Unicorn Artists and Business Plan. It does not exist. I spent years making it and revise it every probably six months based on the feedback I get from my clients and based on the work that we do. And one of the um, first activities, the onboarding activity that they need to um, fulfill is what's called the goal pacer. And they have to fill out goals for year one. So your current state uh, for this year, goals for year three and goals for year five. And then when we get on our first call, we actually go over those goals. And the most common thing that I see is shifting things around. It's in, in areas where a goal you put for year five 
is actually belongs in year one things you can already accomplish or you have already accomplished. And that's like just acknowledging things and recognizing how amazing and how much work you've done so far. Um, and looking at year five and how big you can think, that's going to determine your next step. Because if you're thinking really small, you're like, I just want to make one sale. Um, right? Like, how do you work backwards from that? Because what have you done to, to actually like create that opportunity for yourself? Because no one's going to sell this shit for you. I don't care if you are represented by the fucking David Schwerner gallery. They have their own motives and you have your own motives for selling artwork. And a lot of the times people get into these relationships and nothing sells in for six months. And that's just like a wasted opportunity. Um, so things that to keep in mind is that next steps have a lot to do with mindset and action. Okay. Mindset first, right? Thinking about your level of comfort in uh, different areas of your business and then taking action and implementing immediately. My ideal clients implement the shit out of the things that we discuss like in, like in real time. And to see like things churning and things like, like coming to life right before your eyes is the grit, accountability, and self-awareness that you have to have. That's mindset shit, right? Because she can, she can only implement when she's in the space, like this powerful space of like, I run shit. Okay. So how big can you think, right? If you can think about year five, you don't have a studio right now in year one, and um, you want a private studio where you can have private, you know, viewings and people can make appointments and you can have studio visits and you can maybe sell out of your studio, right? Depending on like where you are today, financially, um, how many sales you're making, like what you're bringing in, what kind of space you're thinking of having and what other goals you might have in place. That might be a year five, that might be a year three, and that might be like now, right? Open spaces are everywhere, right? You can find an artist studio anywhere. Um, and in different states, the range in price is dramatically different, right? Like my sister pays like fourteen fifty for a two bedroom in Philly, and I'm like suffering in Brooklyn. Um, but I love it here. So just thinking about like what's re really realistic. Um, and you know, year one, it wasn't about building a portfolio for her. Um, but for another client that I had, it was about building a very like thoughtful, depth worthy, uh, collection series that focused on a concept for a solo show. Right. So that was the next step in her creating artwork for so long and just kind of like playing. Now she was like, okay, if I want to be accepted to very serious committed programs. I need to do this this year. Then in year three, I need to have solo shows whether it's with this collection and this kind of trial period or a bigger collection where I'm working four foot by six feet, right? So again, you're thinking about this in stages and um, it, it's it's a mixture of of dreaming and of realizing that if you allow yourself to commit to the process, um, go through the the hard times and the good times and celebrate and shift and know when you need to change, you will absolutely reach those goals. It, they're non-negotiables, right? Um, if you waver on those goals and you hit a bump in the road and you're like, fuck, like you're not doing anything for six months, that goal is only going to get further and further away from you. So the next thing that I would say is what skills are you willing to learn? Um, and I say willing because you have to want that, right? You have to want this for yourself. No matter how hard I sell my services um, to everyone, right? As an artist and business coach who has a very well-rounded background, um, you have to be willing 
to soak in information. So what are you interested in learning? What are you eager to learn? And what are you just ready to finally try? So my current client has never put her face on a story. She's never like spoken to her audience, right? And we were running down a list of ways she could navigate not only those feelings, but navigate like what to say. Um, because this was her, her first sort of introductory, like, here's my face. Here's who, um, is behind this incredible artwork that I've been doing for a very long time. And, um, we broke it down into pieces. We broke it down into the mindset of understanding how temporary social media is and how, um, you know, the moment can pass in 24 hours and maybe no one sees it or maybe five people see it or maybe 5,000 people see it, right? Um, but the risk is so much greater, right? Than is, is this a saying like the risk is greater than, the reward is greater than the risk. Two minutes on a story introducing yourself and your what you offer and where you can buy is worth a huge reward of people knowing what you offer, right? Posting these days is just not enough. And the the, the bells and whistles is not even enough, right? You could post 5,000 reels and still not have the traction that you want. So again, she was willing to really fucking put herself in an uncomfortable situation. And we put buffers in place, right? I'm there to support her in expansion. I'm there to challenge her. Um, so we were able to like collaborate on like how to approach this very, very simple, like keeping it very simple. And then the next step was for her to record. And where did she want to sit? And um, what ha what did she want to look like? Makeup, relaxed, like it didn't really, it was, those were her decisions, right? And then I said, you know, if you want to send me that video, feel free, you can do it seven times if you want to. But it was dissecting and pulling apart what this experience was going to look like for her. Cause it was her next step. Um, I want to make sure I have, I have all my things on here. What's I would say making a list of the top three things you have spent, um, the last three years doing really well that you could double down on. So if getting on stories has helped you to meet new people, and has gotten you a lot of connections, you want to double down on that shit. You want to leverage those strengths like your life depends on it. Um, for a while, lives were really working for me to meet new potential clients. I mean, like I was getting to know my first probably five or six clients came from my office hours every single Wednesday. And when that experience didn't feel fulfilling enough, I had to make a big shift and I had to really level up um, my ideal client avatar. Like I had to kind of think about, okay, well, where am I in my experience? I've been doing this a while now. I have the resources, I have the expertise and I have the skill set to, uh, to reach a different type of client at this point, right? And so thinking about three years, what have you spent three things, like three things doing consistently in three years that have worked? Um, who needs to see, hear, buy, hire, and collaborate with you? So thinking about your needs. In year one, you were doing it all. In year three, you want to start maybe outsourcing something that you literally hate um, or just really just, just don't want to do anymore. Right. Like I used to do my taxes and then I was like, Oh, I'm kind of fucking this up. Not my strength. I really want someone who's going to give me the best refund of my fucking life and dig through my money. Um, right. I kind of, that was my next step. And so you might want to think about like, okay, if I want to reach this specific gallery, I love this gallery. I know I could be an asset to this space. This is my, my ideal space. These walls are mine, right? Your next step is going to be to make sure you are visible as fuck. You're like, I'm here. Look at me, see me and do the re the, the research, do the reach out and like have the ball rolling so that they know you exist. We all want to know that you exist. Um, 
And again, like time to outsource, a time to go larger, time to contact people that you may not have ever thought about writing an email to. I pitch to so many different people on a weekly basis. Um, me writing emails is like a piece of cake because I know that, that when I have a voice, um, that I can start that dialogue and that dialogue can go somewhere and that dialogue can go nowhere. I've had many conversations with people where we are so fucking like we're vibing and then it doesn't go anywhere. Um, but it's not that I regret those conversations. Those were the next steps for me. That was practice for me. Um, seeing who really is committed to the collaboration. Maybe there's an artist you've been watching for quite some time that you want to start building a relationship with. And that's a part of how big you can think, how far you can stretch yourself and how far you can, how clear your, your goal is. Um, and it's, it doesn't have to be a 10 year goal. It can be a now goal. It can be a three-year goal. Um, and then really like thinking about if you're outsourcing something, do you need to upgrade your equipment? Do you need to get like a membership to a studio? Do you need to take a class because your painting skills maybe need some work? Because it's not just about making art. You have to be talented. I mean, I maybe no one's going to fucking tell you that, but let me be the first. If you are producing artwork, that is not up to par, that you are creating willy nilly and you're just kind of like, oh, I don't feel like painting the sides of my canvas. I don't feel like putting the finishing touches. I don't feel like providing this, you know, amazing, like next level of care when you are thinking about running an arts business, then, you know, you need to kind of review what you're good at, what you're not good at, and and where those things can be strengthened. There, no one is exempt from taking a class. Um, I've been thinking for a while about taking a couple of classes and just seeing like where my level of like tangible and uh, creativity is. Um, and what do I, maybe I need to go back to the basics right? And, and kind of rein things in and practice the, the, the amazing skill that I went to school for. Um, I was an art teacher for 10 years and I feel like I've kind of lost touch with, um, how I used my hands. Um, and you know, again, I want to go back to the reflection part. What can you start doing? What can you continue doing. That's like the working well and thinking about what the fuck has worked well for three years um, or one year. Maybe it's just this year. You've got six more months left until 2024. This is a perfect time to do that reflection. And what do you need to stop doing? What needs to just be eliminated from your business model, from your life, from your space, from your energy? Um, and, you know, if the goal last year was a solo show, where are you right now? Are you making that happen? Is, are the wheels churning? Are you making those connections? So, you know, this is a very like complex discussion. It's a complex topic because obviously I'm speaking to all of you in, in the most broad way. Um, but hopefully you could see yourself somewhere in what I'm talking about, right? And something resonated with you in the last, you know, 20 minutes or so that I've been recording. Um, you know, the the amazing thing about reaching lots of people on social media or on different platforms is that you can work through one topic and like go into so many areas of it. Um, whether again, you're in a particular stage of your business, emerging, practicing or professional. And um, it's not about years of experience. It's about how far you've, you've dove into the work. Um, what have you experienced? And being hard on yourself sometimes about, um, what changes, what shifts, maybe you just need to fucking step up and you need to kick yourself in the ass sometimes and say, you know what? Like, yeah, I want to go into the studio today, but I also know that I haven't been on social media in two weeks. 
I haven't been telling people that I have new artwork for sale. I have not solidified my pricing strategy. Um, maybe you need to revisit your pricing, right? What's, what is yesterday's price is not today's price. Every year I give myself a raise. And I think that that's just how jobs work. Um, so you get to dictate everything. That's like the life that we've chosen. You get to fucking call the shots on what the next step is. You, that's like the power in, in what we do. That is fucking magical. That is just, sometimes I'm like, I have way too much power and way too much freedom. Um, and that can get overwhelming for me. I think that that will, um, that's part of the my excitement and my anxiety. Anxiety does not, um, you know, have to be this negative thing. A lot of the times it's excitement um, for what's to come, um, right? When we're waiting for an application to come through, like we're anxious. We're like, oh, I want to know. And then whether, you know, whether whatever the decision is, you're still going to be hit with um, an intense emotion. So, you know, you, uh, all of you, I hope that this was like an inspiring topic. It, it, I get revved up whenever I'm talking about business and the artist and, um, squashing and just fucking dismantling the starving artist mindset, um, regardless of whether you dip into it and dip out of it. Um, the consistency of being a leader in the art industry has to be a, like an unwavering commitment in your life. If you want a lifelong financially sustain, like sustainable arts business, we want to see you. We know you fucking are killing it in the studio. We know that you're producing mad shit. We know you've got back stock. I support all artists. If you can look behind me, I've got so much artwork in my apartment and I love the way it makes me feel around myself. I cannot wait to see what is next for you. Um, and I do want to mention a couple of my services. If you are someone who wants to know what's next and you want the guidance to actually get to that space and be held accountable and have, um, an amazing relationship with me where we work together to thicken the layer that your arts business needs. Um, I have a couple of different ways that you can work with me, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, which is a four month commitment. Um, that is my most intimate, um, kind and customized, personalized type of work that I do. Um, if you just need monthly check-ins to make sure that you are really clear on your vision, really clear on your strategy, clear on like where you are mentally and making sure that those blocks are being broken down. Um, then I have those, it's called the creators, uh, career bundle and, and you can save money on uh, monthly calls. And then there are more things coming through the pipeline. The, the creators, um, God, I'm fucking like, there's like a list, a, a creators connection hour, um, is coming back. Those are my monthly office hours and, you know, stay tuned. Who knows what's, you know, I have so many different ideas happening in my head and I want to like, when I present things, I want to be really, really clear and confident. Um, otherwise I'm in my hole and I am like churning. I am like ooh, cooking up some things. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, uh, subscribe, share, sign up for my email list. And if you, um, have any kind of comments or questions, maybe it's really a specific one to your business. Um, comment below, DM me. I love feedback and, uh, I thrive on it because that's how I know that I'm going in the right direction or if I'm going farther. Um, anyway, have a great rest of your day and depending on what time of day it is for you. Um, and stay tuned for the next episode.